All right, strap in, everyone, because on today's deep dive, we're tackling Elon Musk. Oh, this should be good. But wait, hold on. We're not diving into Tesla or SpaceX this time. Really? Nope. We're going deep into something you might not expect. Mm. His radical vision for education. Now, that's interesting. I think a lot of people might not know about that. Yeah. It's definitely a lesser known side of him. Absolutely. Everyone knows about the groundbreaking companies, but his ideas on how we learn are, well, pretty unconventional. Maybe even controversial, you could say. That's what we're here to find out. We've got a whole stack of sources for this one. Articles, interviews, even a sneak peek into the curriculum at his own school, Astronova. I didn't realize he had his own school. He does, yeah. Yeah. Our mission today is to understand how this guy, who's literally aiming for Mars, thinks we should be preparing young minds here on Earth. Right here, right now. I like it. So where do we even begin to unpack this? Well, I think to understand Musk's perspective, we have to start with his critique of the traditional education system. Oh, yeah. He's definitely not shy about sharing his opinions on that. Not at all. In one YouTube interview, he just flat out says college is mostly for fun and proving you can handle tedious tasks, not for real learning. I mean, wow. That's a pretty bold statement, especially coming from a billionaire who presumably went to college himself. Right. So I'm curious, is he just being provocative here or is there a deeper point he's trying to make? I think there's definitely more to it than just provocation. He goes on to argue that the traditional system is fundamentally flawed. Like, he actually compares it to watching a low-budget, poorly acted play instead of a captivating, big-budget film, you know, where you're just totally immersed in the experience. Okay, I get the analogy. Hmm. So, in his view, learning should be engaging, immersive, almost like a video game, right? Exactly. He actually uses that comparison. I could see how that would appeal to a certain type of learner. Hmm. But isn't there value in the traditional approach, too? I mean, not everyone learns best through games. He does acknowledge that some people might actually enjoy that structure and routine of traditional schooling. Right. But he believes it just fails to truly nurture those individual talents and passions. Yeah, that makes sense. Especially in today's world, you know, where the skills you need to succeed are constantly changing. So how does Musk put these ideas into practice? Well, this is where things get really interesting. Enter Ad Astra, the school he founded for his own children. Wait, his own school? I did not know that. Yeah. No grades, project-based learning, heavy emphasis on STEM and AI. I mean, it sounds like something out of a science fiction novel. Wow. So he basically created his own little educational utopia. Yeah. But is that just an exclusive experiment for the elite, or can the average person tap into these ideas? So Ad Astra was very much an experiment, a testing ground, you could say. And while the school itself was pretty small and exclusive, it actually evolved into something even more intriguing, Astronova an online school now accessible to students worldwide. Wow. So he took that Ad Astra model and made it global. That's ambitious. Definitely. Ages 10 to 14, they can get in on this. Okay, but what about the curriculum? What are these kids actually learning? Well, one of the core components is their conundrums curriculum. Basically, it's a collection of these ethical dilemmas, you know, these quandaries, designed to spark critical thinking and decision-making skills. So, like... Real-world problem-solving. Exactly. They're given these scenarios and have to work through the complexities, figure out the best course of action, and be able to articulate their reasoning. Interesting. Can you give an example? Yeah. So one scenario presents students with, get this, a self-driving car that malfunctions. Oh, wow. And has to choose between hitting a group of pedestrians or swerving into a wall, potentially harming the passenger. Intense, right? Yeah, that is intense. It's definitely not your typical classroom material. It sounds like Astronova is trying to cultivate not just those technical skills, but also the ability to navigate those complex gray areas of real world problem. You got it. And this focus on problem solving and critical thinking is totally aligned with Musk's overall philosophy, right? Remember, his mantra is, make it great. And that ethos just permeates everything at Astronova. Make it great. I like that. Okay, so we've talked about the curriculum, but I'm really curious about the day-to-day -day experience at Astronova. What's the vibe like? Well, we get some cool insights from Josh Don, the school's director, in an interview on the Kindle D podcast. He really emphasizes that student agency is super important at Astronova. Student agency. Mm -hmm. What does that mean in this context? So basically, it means giving students a real voice in their education, you know, encouraging them to actually participate in decision making, share their ideas freely, even challenge the status quo. So it's not a free for all, 
but they have more ownership over their learning. Exactly. They're not just passive recipients of information. They're active participants in shaping their experience. Okay. I'm starting to see how this all ties together. But is there like a specific example of how this plays out in the classroom? Actually, there's this great anecdote from the podcast that illustrates this. Don describes a student who's presenting a project, right? And they notice a classmate is totally distracted by a toy. Oh, I can picture that. Yeah. Classic classroom scenario. Instead of waiting for a teacher to intervene, the student just politely asks their classmate to put the toy away. Explains that it's making it hard for them to focus. Oh, that's amazing. So they're not just learning about science and technology. They're learning how to communicate effectively, advocate for themselves, and respect others. Exactly. And this emphasis on fostering responsibility and initiative ties directly back to Musk's whole vision. He really believes that traditional schooling can stifle creativity, you know? Yeah, I can see that. And problem-solving skills. He's determined to create a learning environment where those qualities can just flourish. Okay, so Astronova is definitely a radical departure from the norm. Mm -hmm. But is there a way for someone, like the average person, to tap into these ideas? That's where Synthesis comes in. It's this ed tech company that was co-founded by Don. It's essentially Astronova's principles distilled into a platform anyone can access. Interesting. So is this like an online version of Astronova then? Not exactly. Synthesis really focuses specifically on developing teamwork and those collaborative skills through what they call team thinking games. Oh, I like that. Team mm -hmm. thinking games. So what are those like? Well, they're designed to simulate real world challenges where collaboration is absolutely key to success. Okay. That makes sense. So it's like learning by doing, but in a virtual environment. You got it. One of their flagship games is called Art for All and it challenges teams to curate art collections for different cities, each with their own unique tastes. Art for all. So there's an artistic element to this too. Yeah, it's really cool. It blends art history, market research, strategic decision-making, all in a game format. Wow, that's way more engaging than a typical lecture or worksheet. Right, I mean, just imagine the skills they're developing. Communication, negotiation, strategic thinking, all under pressure. Way more like the real world, you know? Absolutely, so synthesis is taking these complex skills and making them fun and accessible? Exactly. And what's really interesting is Synthesis actually has two branches. There's Teams, which is all about those collaborative games, and then there's a separate product called Tutor. Hmm. Tutor, huh? Makes you wonder what they're working on over there. Yeah, unfortunately, our sources don't give us much detail on that one. Well, maybe that's a deep dive for another day. <laughs> but before we get too distracted, let's get back to Musk's, well, perhaps his grandest educational venture yet the Texas Institute of Technology and Science, or, as is better known, TITS. Ah, yes, TITS. That acronym definitely raises some eyebrows. It does. <sighs> but let's try to stay focused on the serious intent here. Yeah. This is Musk's vision for a tuition-free university in Austin, Texas. A completely tuition-free university. That's the idea. And it's shaping up to be a truly groundbreaking project. Okay, I have to ask, the name, was that intentional? I mean, it's just so memorable. Well, we can only speculate. But putting the name aside, what is it about this university that's so groundbreaking? It really embodies everything we've been talking about. It's his answer to those shortcomings of traditional higher education. That heavy emphasis on STEM fields, practical skills, preparing students for those jobs of the future, it's all there. So it's like Astronova, but on a massive scale. Exactly. With a higher education focus. And he's not just talking the talk. He's putting serious money behind this. A $100 million donation plus $2.2 billion in Tesla stock allocated to the project. Whoa. Those are some serious numbers. He's not messing around. He's dead serious about making this a reality. It makes you wonder, could TITS become a model for other universities? I mean, could this spark a revolution in higher education? It's definitely a possibility. But before we get too carried away, I think we need to dive deeper into the specifics. What are those core values that will shake this institution? What kind of learning experience can students actually expect? We'll explore those questions and more when we continue our deep dive next time. Sounds good to me. Okay, so we're back and ready to dig deeper into Elon Musk's unconventional vision for education. Yeah, where we left off was with that um, audacious Texas Institute of Technology and Science. We were calling it TITS for short. Right, TITS. Yeah. We talked about the massive funding Musk has committed, but what exactly does he actually envision for this tuition-free institution? Right, like what's going to set it apart from, you know, all the other universities out there? Well, one of the key pillars is this um, focus on STEM fields. Mm. You know, science, tech, engineering, and math. 
makes sense given his background. But is it just about, you know, cramming students' heads with all that theoretical knowledge? Not at all. Musk's a big believer in a hands-on project-based approach. Students learn by actually doing, solving those real-world problems. So less time in lecture halls, more time in like labs and workshops. Exactly. Think of it as a more immersive and practical version of an engineering school. You know, mm. there's a strong emphasis on innovation and uh, entrepreneurship. Musk has even hinted that Tits will collaborate with his companies like Tesla and SpaceX. Imagine getting to work on cutting edge projects side by side with industry experts. I mean, for an aspiring engineer or entrepreneur, pretty amazing opportunity. Definitely. But I'm also curious about the non-academic aspects of TITS. What about the campus culture? You know, the community, what kind of vibe is he hoping to foster? That's a good question. While the specifics are still, you know, a bit under wraps, we can get some hints from his previous ventures. I mean, he's known for this firm belief in meritocracy. Talent and hard work are rewarded, you know, no matter your background. That's so going to be a highly competitive environment. Only the best of the best. It'll attract those bright minds, yeah. But from what we know about Astronova and Synthesis, he does understand that individual excellence and collaborative problem solving go hand in hand. Right, because even the most brilliant minds need to be able to work with others. It's especially in fields like engineering and tech, it's all about teamwork, right? Absolutely. So, yeah, it'll be competitive, but there will have to be that emphasis on collaboration. I'm still kind of wondering, though, about that overall vibe. Will it be more like a pressure cooker environment? Or will there be that balance between, you know, pushing for excellence and also student well-being? Yeah, that's a great question. And one that honestly, only time will tell. I mean, Musk's known for his demanding work ethic, that relentless pursuit of innovation. So, yeah, Tits will likely reflect those values. But he also seems to recognize the importance of a supportive community, you know, a place where students can thrive, not just academically, but personally, too. It'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. But let's shift gears for a minute and talk about Synthesis, yeah. that ed tech company spun out of Astronova. We briefly touched on their team thinking games, but I'd love to, you know, explore those more in detail. Oh, yeah, those are really fascinating. It's a great example of how those educational principles we've been discussing can be applied to a much wider audience. You mentioned Art for All as one example. Can you just remind us how that game works and what skills it's trying to develop? Sure. So in Art for All, you have these teams of players. They act as curators, and they're tasked with building these art collections for different cities. And each city has their own unique cultural preferences. Gotcha. So the players, they have to you know, research artists, art movements, analyze those market trends. They have to make decisions about what pieces to acquire and all at a certain price point, lots of strategy involved. So it's like art history, economics, and strategic thinking all mixed into one. Yeah, exactly. And it's all wrapped up in a game, so it's fun and competitive. I like that. But what are those specific skills that players develop through that? Art for All and really all of the synthesis games focus on what we call those 21st century skills, right? So you've got your communication, collaboration, critical thinking, problem solving, adaptability. Those are definitely essential for just about anyone navigating today's world, not just students. Right. It's interesting how synthesis has managed to like gamify these skills, the learning process becomes way more engaging, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, Synthesis also has that other branch called Tutor, which we haven't really talked about much. Yeah, that's right. We don't have a ton of details on what Tutor entails, but it suggests that they're working on personalized learning experiences, you know, to complement those team-based games. Makes sense. So they're offering both collaborative and individualized learning opportunities. Yeah. But let's go back to that question of accessibility. You mentioned Synthesis makes these ideas, you know, more accessible in Astronova, but who's their target audience? Their aim is to reach a wider range of students than Astronova, for sure. But it's not necessarily designed for, you know, widespread adoption in those traditional school systems. They're more focused on supplemental education, like enrichment programs, extracurriculars, that kind of thing. So more like a niche market for parents and educators who are looking for something different, more innovative. Exactly. But even if it's not a mainstream solution, it's still a really interesting attempt to translate those ideas into a format that more people can access. Absolutely. Okay, so we've talked a lot about his schools, the games, but we haven't really touched on Musk's stance on, you know, traditional credentials, college degrees. Does he think they're becoming obsolete? Uh, that's the big question, isn't it? And to be honest, his views on this are complex and often misunderstood. I can imagine. Yeah. 
So we need to unpack them carefully. All right, well, let's do that then. We'll continue this deep dive into Musk's educational vision when we come back. Welcome back to our deep dive, everyone. We're wrapping up our exploration of Elon Musk's vision for education. You know, we've covered a lot. His schools, that university project, even that company trying to, you know, make these ideas more accessible. Yeah, yeah. it's been a fascinating journey, but I think we need to address the elephant in the room. You mean like the whole question of those traditional credentials? Diplomas, degrees. Exactly. <laughs> Musk's said some pretty provocative things about college degrees, even suggested, you know, they're becoming obsolete. But is that really his position or is there like a more nuanced take here that we're missing? Well, it's true. He's been pretty critical of that traditional emphasis on degrees. Yeah. He's argued that, you know, in a lot of cases, they're more about like signaling conformity. <laughs> and the ability to just like endure those tedious tasks rather than showing real world skills I think and it, knowledge. I mean, he's even encouraged some people to like drop out of college. Right. If they have that proven track record, the exceptional talent. Yeah. He thinks that time spent getting a degree could be better used, you know, actually applying those skills and making a real impact. But doesn't that kind of devalue like a well-rounded education, all the benefits of rigorous academic study? I don't think he's dismissing those values completely. He's just challenging that assumption that a college degree is like the only pathway right. to success, especially in fields like tech, engineering. Where it's more about what you can do, not just what you know. Exactly. Practical skills, hands-on experience, those are often more valuable than, you know, just theoretical knowledge. Okay, so it's not about abolishing college altogether, but more about recognizing that it's not like a one-size-fits-all solution. Exactly. We need a system that's more diverse and flexible, you know, caters to all those different talents and ways of learning. He sees a future where those traditional degrees might exist alongside those alternative paths to prove, like, competence, expertise. That makes a lot of sense, especially today. I mean, technology is changing so fast. Job markets are evolving, right? The skills that are in high demand today might be, like, totally obsolete tomorrow. Exactly. So how do we adapt to that? Yeah. How do we adapt? Well, one of his big proposals is to really focus on those foundational skills that are like transferable. He's all about critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, communication, you know, those skills. The things you need to be successful no matter what you do. Yes. Regardless of your specific knowledge, your technical expertise. It's like giving them a mental toolkit to like navigate this ever-changing world. Exactly. And this focus on those transferable skills aligns with all that, you know, hands-on learning, that real-world problem solving he's always talking about. Right. It's not just about memorizing facts for a test. It's mm -hmm. about developing that mindset of curiosity, Absolutely. resilience. Yeah. And this brings us to the like the core of Musk's vision, really. Mm. He sees learning as this ongoing process, something that's engaging, challenging, and empowering. Empowering. I like that. So it's about fostering a love of learning that extends beyond the classroom. Into every aspect of life. Yeah. We should all be lifelong learners, right? Constantly searching out that new knowledge, new skills, and, you know, expanding those horizons. It's an inspiring vision for sure. But it also raises questions, right? Like, yeah. how do we actually measure and assess these skills in a way that's meaningful and fair? That's something educators are really wrestling with. Yeah. You know, those traditional tests often miss the mark when it comes to like capturing the full range of what's needed, for sure. What about equity, access? How do we make sure all students get those opportunities? Yeah, no matter their background. That's critical, absolutely critical. Yeah, it's clear that you know Musk's vision is ambitious. It's definitely thought provoking. It's not fully realized yet. It's but sparking a really important conversation. About what learning can be, how to prepare for the future. And whether you agree with all his ideas or not. Yeah. You have to admit that unconventional thinking is pushing us to reimagine things. So as we wrap up our deep dive here, I want to leave everyone with a final thought. If you could design your ideal learning environment, what would it look like? What resonates with you from Musk's vision? What would you change? Keep exploring these ideas, challenge those assumptions, and be part of that conversation shaping the future of education. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, Keep learning, keep questioning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible.